Now, we've gone over this. Great. Show us a bunch of stuff we can't afford. Thank you very much. <laughs> what we're going to do now is talk about reels, guys. We're going to start with spinning reels. If I get on your boat and you got anything bigger than this after this seminar, oh, we're going to fight. Okay? Guys, man, don't go buying a big, huge reel, okay? I fish for a living. I think I'm pretty good, but I think I'm good at everything. Problem is, in all my fishing time, as much as I wanted it to happen, I have yet to have a fish spool me, okay? You guys watch the show. We catch pretty good fish, okay? I have not yet had a fish spool me, okay? What it has to do with is understanding why you had a reel that big, okay? So let's take a look at these two guys. Have a Garcia 801. <coughs> if you buy it, great. If you don't, whatever, okay? Have a Garcia 704. Okay. All the 800 series, 700 series lets you know how much money is going into my tackle store when you buy it. 801 costs more than a 701 because an 8 is higher than a 7. Okay. What is important is obviously you want to make sure that you have the right caliber of reel. You want to buy a good quality reel. What's important, remember I said 801? That is a size 1. Okay, I've got pretty small hands. You can see that reel. It's a pretty small reel. Okay, 704, size four. Comes in a size one. Size four. Okay. If we're going drop shotting, and you call me up and said, Seth, I want to buy some tackle from your store. I want the right rod. We know we're going to get you, right? And I want that 704 for my reel. Send it to me. I won't send it to you. I will because you're paying me, but I'm going to tell you I won't. Okay? What did I tell you about the importance of the rod? Lightweight. When we go on our little break, you guys can pick these reels up and you'll see what I'm talking about. You put a big old heavy reel on there, it takes away from sensitivity. Okay? Anytime I am jigging, Anytime I'm drop shotting, anytime I'm psycho fishing, if I'm fishing lightweight worms on a Texas rig, lightweight reel. Sensitive, okay? Went down to the clear water with Chad. I use six pound test fire line. That is six pound test. On the drop shot DVD, I got a lot of people saying, now is that six pound test diameter? No, that's six pound test, two pound diameter. I was gonna spool up with eight. This little guy right here holds 125 yards of six, about 100 of eight, okay? Forgot to do it. Got down there, rigged it up, this'll be cool. Yeah, this little guy, done it before, okay? We caught, what did we catch, Chad? Chad caught more than I, but we won't talk about that, okay? Never had one fish break me off. Never had one fish spool me. Got them in relatively fast. Okay. But it was not the reel to do the job. When I throw out steelhead fishing with my bobber, I don't care if I feel it because I'm going to see the bobber go blank. Okay? I have no sensitivity to worry about. This reel here now becomes the reel to do the job, okay? You guys know where the McGill hole's at? You see 700 people sitting in there, okay? I was drifting this all the way down as a joke with Chad to where I had just the arbor knot, and that was it. Going, phew, hope they don't bite. The reason why I was doing it, because I wasn't going to let Chad out drift me, man. He's not going to get that other 15 yards past me, okay? If something would have got on, I'd have been in trouble. Okay. Now, 
guys like to use these to throw spinner baits. They like to throw them with crank baits. Now, if it's a small crank bait, fine. If it's a big old heavy crank bait, not fine. Who has ever had line twist? <laughs> he real subtly, eh. Raise your hand and be proud. There you go. Randy's proud. Okay, guys. Line twist created by two things with a spinning reel. Okay? The first is you did not put the line on there right. Very important. We're going to show you in a second. The second thing is you're using a bait that pulls too hard. If you don't believe me, next time you're out trolling, throw a crankbait out. Keep trolling and reel that dude in. As soon as it goes slack, it's going to go Wah! and knot up. It spins your line. When you are drop shot fishing, when you are jig fishing, when you are throwing small crappie spinner baits, you are throwing small crank baits, not a lot of tension. Does not allow you to spin the line. Through the course of the day, if you continue to throw those light crank baits, you may encounter line twist because there's still some tension on there. Okay? I had a guy email me from up in Canada, just to use this as an example. He emails me, a big long email. Canadians are great, love them. They watch the show all the time. Seth, I have line twists. I've bought all these swivels. And he had, I didn't even know there were so many swivel companies out there. What is wrong with the swivels? They're in the business of making swivels. Nothing's wrong with the swivel. I said, what kind of fishing are you doing? I'm trolling. What are you trolling for? Trolling for trout. Oh, trout. Trout equals big old Ford Fender Jack Lloyd beer can with a wedding ring, whatever. Okay? I haven't asked him, are you pulling around big old flashers? Why, yes, I am. Well, as soon as he let it out and crank it in, all that tension spinning the line. You have got to use a level wind reel when you're doing that kind of thing. How many trolling specific reels do you see that are like this? You ever see a line counter on one of these? No. Okay? Don't use heavy baits that pull hard with a spinning reel. Okay? Now, how many of you have ever spooled a spinning reel? Said, man, that's pretty. I filled it up to a sixteenth from the rim. I go out and I throw it one time and I say, what happened in the truck? Because it's all messed up. That ever happened to any of you when you threw it out there? Okay. We're going to fix that problem. It's very old line. Four cauldron. We're going to get into lines later. Whatever you use. I'm not up here to sell you stuff. What I am here to do is show you how to do it properly. How do you guys spin your spinning reel? Do you have your wife, girlfriend, son, daughter, put a pencil through there? Hold that tight, Susie. Dad, my fingers are getting hot. I don't care. Hold it. <laughs> do you do that? How many of you do that? I see a nudge, a laugh. Okay. There's no hands high, but I'm going to get that a few of you have. <coughs> what are we doing? We're creating tension on the spool and spinning it onto the reel. It's just like throwing that heavy bait out there. Okay? Well, Seth, how am I supposed to spool it up and keep tension? If I don't keep tension, it's going to be a wad. I'm going to hook a fish, the drag's in the gut, it's going to get stuck underneath. No problem. My nose is bugging me, guys. See how that spins? See how that spins? See how that spins? What's in common? They go in the same direction. Same direction. Clockwise. If you get a weird spool, maybe counterclockwise. Now what the manufacturers do, you guys know why there's a label on there? Well, it's to tell me what it is, no? It's to tell you how to spool it. It is for what it is, but I'm going to tell you how to use that. You throw this guy on the ground. Well, I can't possibly keep tension on that. Run it through your guides. Tie your arbor knot, hook it up. Make sure you had the bail open because you tie it and the bail is closed and it won't go on. OK? 
okay? I'm gonna blow my nose. And what you guys gotta do, oh, that was rude, wasn't it? That's for all, that's, that's some of that special footage. Okay, guys, when you throw it on the floor, that floor card was good, I can't even see it. You want that to come off the same way that the spinning rail is turning as the spinning rail turns starring Seth Burrell. <laughs> okay? Now, when you do that, you run it through your rod, guides, you hook it up, you probably missed a guide in the way through, don't worry about that. Tie it on. Now, you can put the reel in your hand, I hold the rod up here, I pinch the line down and I start cranking. But Seth, you just told us you can't put no tension on the line. It's coming off the same way, so it cannot coil itself. Got it? It can't coil because it's coming off the same way. So now I put tension on this, I crank it up nice and tight, I go out and I throw it and it lays out nice, so I put it on the right direction. Typically, if they do it right, and sometimes with some manufacturers, you'll find a few where they don't. The label is looking at you, and then you spin it on, and you will be right. 99% of the time, unless somebody flipped the spool over and put it on backwards. Label up. Just to double check, make sure it comes off same direction. Spin in the same direction. Okay, if you do it the opposite, whew, that's ugly. Spinning reels, guys have come a long ways, but the line is what's important with a spinning reel. Get yourself a good quality line. Guys, I like for the spinning reel, I'll use a suffix a lot of times, okay? Nice thing about it is when I cast it, it doesn't coil up, okay, less memory. If you're one of those guys that goes into Walmart and sees that big old 1,500 yard spool of that blue stuff for a buck, Hey man, have at it. But, you're gonna have memory, okay? You just spent 50 cents on that spool and you threw it and it's got blah, memory all out there, okay? Before you go fishing, unscrew this guy, pop the spool off, get your tap water as hot as it will, put it in a cup, throw that in there. Let it sit while you're hooking the boat up, put it back on, memory is gone. The heat relaxes it. Now don't boil water on the stove, throw it in there because you're really going to make it soft, and you will, but just hot tap water, okay? If you use a good line though, that memory thing is gone. It's not like the old days. Back when I was a young pup five years ago, they didn't have this kind of line. Okay, but that's how you get rid of the memory. Now guys, the only other time when you throw a big spinning reel like this is if you were using a heavier line because you need that capacity. If you want to throw a jerk bait, a lot of guys have a hard time working a jerk bait with a bait caster and reeling and doing it all at the same time. Spinning reel is fine because jerk bait is put the action with the rod tip and I reel the slack up. No tension, no spin. But I want to use a 10 or 12 pound test, 14 pound test. I got to use something this size. Sensitivity is not an issue when I'm jerk bait fishing because they're going to crush it. Okay. A few more minutes rolling here, guys. We'll take a break. <laughs>